part of southern Africa, Zambia harnesses two natural strengths, its mineral-rich plateau and dual-season climate, as the bedrock of its agricultural economic development. Yet in a digital age, power shortages, patchy network coverage and uneven public services act as both a challenge and a catalyst for change. Since launching its eighth national development plan back in 2022, Zambia has accelerated its digital transformation. And last year, the government partnered with Huawei to launch the Digital Rural Initiative in Mochila, delivering electricity, internet connectivity, and improved public services to remote communities. At MWC 2025 here in Barcelona, Zambia and Huawei hailed the initiative as a blueprint for rural digitalization worldwide. So, I'm joined by two people who can tell us more. Hello, my name is Brian Kavenzu. I'm the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Technology and Science in Zambia. Hello, my name is Lee Junfeng Windley. I'm the CEO of Huawei Public Service Sector. The Eight Nation Development Plan was developed in 2022. It was launched in order to run for a period of five years. But under it, you realize that there was now need for us to talk about the digital transformation strategy. And so this digital transformation strategy, it speaks to exactly how we want to ensure that we digitalize the country, especially the underserved and the unserved communities. Because we do realize, and we, we, we realize, you know, at the end of the day that in, in order for us to ensure that we bring in, you know, what we call a digital economy, in order to bring in about efficiencies, especially around the agriculture sector, the mining sector, the tourism, there was need for us to ensure that, you know, a lot of our, you know, places, you know, are actually connected. We also have the ICT policy, you know, in Zambia. And, you know, we also have, you know, recently we launched the artificial intelligence strategy. And so all these pieces of registration and documentation that we have, this is, you know, uh, regulations that we have in place, they actually speak to exactly how we want to make sure that we digitalize our country. So, Windley, turning to you then, as a strategic partner for Zambia, what innovative approaches has Huawei adopted to, to help identify and support those digital needs? You know, Huawei have been served for Zambia uh, for more than two decades. So we know the country that when we go to ICT and uh, AR developed plans, I think the most important is forcing the connection. We're talking about the uh, digitalization, then we go to artificial in intelligence. The basic one, we said you need a data, but the data need to move. I think the connections, connectivities, connectivity is very important. Uh, that's why we pick up, you know, something small. We want a village to be smart. Now every village if you become smart, now Zambia becomes smart. So Huawei's been identifying Zambia's pain points and how have you found that? Very, very important. I think, you know, this started when our president visited China about two years and then at that point, Huawei was gracious enough. So specifically, that facility was taken to a school in Mujila. And then, you know, we used that one there for purposes of identifying exactly how it works so that if I had to order any gas before we can take it further, we needed to actually study that. And the president has liked it. But of course, we hope that, you know, you know uh, at the implementation stage, we may not want to go with a short term would want to go, you see, you know, a, a, a total so that we are able to cover the entire community effectively at the end of the day, so that at least a number of people are covered as opposed to a short term. It is a, a constant process of adaptation, isn't it? And this, the importance of the integration of smart education, of power structures and the infrastructure overall, the connectivity. I think when we are starting to do some, some analysis, for the village of Machila, we find you know you need to combine some kind of service, not only provide the connections. You know we build the towers, and also the solar panel who can supply the you know the electricity for the base stations. But actually, they also provide some you know electricity power to other public services. This is bring less connections as a basic requirement. On top of that, we also want to bring some 
public services to the community. In China, also have a good cases. I think they will be also used later in, in, in Zambia is, you know, you sell through your, your, your agricultural, let's say, uh, uh, foods and vegetables, uh, and also your, your products. So TikTok pl platform. Later, when you have connections, you also can sell in Zambia. You have a good foods or good vegetables. You can sell to other communities. So it becomes an absolute backbone, a sort of a chance to blossom from there into to other services. Yes, yes. I think we, are, we want to provide, based on the connections, we want to provide more public services to the community people. It's about the impact. Mm. We have identified what we call the four key drivers of our economic transformation and job creation you know, uh, agenda. It's one of the pillars in our ethnic development plan. So agriculture, manufacturing, mining and tourism have been critically identified as the key drivers for that. In order for us to do that, we realize that is need for connectivity. And uh, so far, you know, we have been upgrading a lot of our towers from 2G to 4G. We even came up with a policy where we are saying, going forward, every other tower that is going to be, you know, erected in Zambia must come with at least a minimum of 4G. The technology specifically that has also been coming from away, you know, in terms of upgrading our towers from 2G to 4G has actually been very good in order for us to get to where we want to do in order to enhance our agriculture, you know, our livestock, our you know, tourism. Furthermore, because of this free education policy that uh, was uh, you know, brought by our president, we have seen a huge number of, you know, pupils coming back to school in excess of two million, you know, people who were not in school, they have come back. And so there's now need for us to actually leverage education. And that's the more reason as to why even the president, when he saw uh, that solution that was brought, he said, no, this one, he would want to see how we can replicate, you know, a solution of this nature to many other, you know, uh, places in the community in order to ensure that learners are able to, to get. So if you tell me to say, no, which one in particular will I be able to actually talk about, uh, I'll be talking about a platform. Yes, the 4G network that we have actually been able to use in order to bring in now these other applications that I'm talking about. Well, it's as brilliant says just finally, it's about the impact of this technology. You're able to leapfrog technology in Zambia from 2G to 4G, but ultimately it's about the impact that technology has on real people and businesses. When we go to uh, sometime, you know, the villages, you need a coverage more than the traffic. Mm -hmm. Second, you need to do a, a solution very cost effective. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a same, let's see, a solution as in the city. So that's a challenge on that. Well, we innovatively provide called a solution we call Ruru Star. Is you, you have very limited power needs for the, for the base stations. And because otherwise, you know, in the, in the air, rural area, technology is not only challenge. The second challenge is support and services. Because you already have equipment there, you need a, a solar power, a solar panel there. If you deploy very complicated, very big system, the maintenance and support is another challenge because when they have uh, problems, you could not send the people. So I think for Huawei is much, much more f focused on the, the technology search, Performance should be good, like 4G. You cannot bring 2G to there. Second is cost effectively. The third one is quality. Because you deploy there three years or two years, you should not have any problems. You cannot send every week an engineer there to fix. This is some the innov innovative, let's say, uh, target for us to deliver this kind of, let's say, solution. Brilliant and Wingley, thank you both very much.